All right. So let's be introduced to measuring angle in radians. Now, my title of the discussion topic here is degrees versus radians, but uh, I figure everybody has been knowing what degrees are and, and how to measure angles in degrees since a long time ago, so there's no reason to bring all, you all the way back into that uh, ultra basic stuff. All right, so on my prepare unit circle over right here, so once again, the initial side, let's say we're starting here, and for now, let's look at the positive angle for simple start right here. So first of all, the zero angle is when the terminal side and the initial side meet together, or basically it's just that line, so zero degrees is right now, right there, because you're not going anywhere. You stay right at the start of your rotation. You didn't make any rotation yet. And then when your, ang when your terminal points move to this first point, and you can see that right on my so zero is here, and then when we move to about somewhere right there, we're opening up some angle. And so, so but when your angle is open up where that terminal point lands into that point right there, then this is the 30 degrees angle. And so like I said, again, I don't need to remind you what 30 degrees mean. It just, so that's about how big a 30 degree angle is. And so now these are my uh, other, a few other special angles that I have uh, put on here on the circle. But so when your terminal point moves to that particular point, then the angle it makes here is a 45 degrees angle. And then over here, it's 60 degrees, and so on, and so on, and so on. 90 degrees is when your terminal side or the, your terminal point you get to that uh, straight up vertical line, 90 degrees. And then, like I said earlier, the units are on the unit circle, the rotation can continue rotating, and here we're starting to have angles being larger, being greater than 90 degrees. So when we hit to that terminal point about right there, back on my unit circle, then in terms of, in terms of degrees, the angle created now all the way there, that angle now is 120 degrees. And then this next angle here is another 15 degrees away. That makes it 135 degrees. And then this angle here is another 15 degrees away. So this is right here is a 150 degrees. And when we are right on the opposite side of where we start, then this is 180 degrees. And so notice, I am using all the positive measurement right now because you can see as I'm moving along the unit circle over here, I was going in the, in the counterclockwise direction. And as we have learned earlier, the opening up the, the, the rotation going in the counterclockwise direction is the positive rotation. And that's coming out with positive angle. So this angle here is positive 210. That angle right here is another 15 degrees uh, further from the positive 210. So over here, that, that's making it 225. And this angle down here, when it gets to here, we are looking at 240. And these are all positive angles. And then, of course, when it gets, when it moves to this terminal point where the terminal side is right here, then we're looking at the angle in degrees, 270 degrees. Okay? And so now I'm going to start speeding up the process a little bit. But so here it's 300 degrees. This is 315. Right here is 330. And when it gets to here, we complete a cycle. So we come back to the initial point right here. We made it, thinking of that as a complete rotation, and we made a 360 degrees of rotation. But thinking about a, a complete restart here, then we're at the zero angle again. And so that's how the unit circle rotation goes. 
But so now these angles right here, I'm indicating in terms of degrees and going in positive direction, the counterclockwise rotation. All right, and hopefully to keep everybody you know, keep getting better and better at uh, understanding positive versus negative angles. So before I rush into introducing the the radians, then once again back into these uh, field circle with all the positive uh, angles in degrees right here. But if that terminal point was moving in a clockwise direction, indicating a clockwise rotation around the circle, then this first land point, this first special point right here would be a, now instead of positive 330, it is now in the negative angle, as a negative angle, negative 30 degrees. So once again, we always move from, move out things out away from that initial side right here and that initial point there. And then this is a negative 45 degrees. And when we move down to this point right here, moving down to that point in a clockwise direction, and that's instead of being positive 300 degrees, we're looking at, we're saying that this is negative 60 degrees. The angle positive 270 degrees is on behalf of the positive rotation, but now on behalf of the negative rotation, that when we hit to that point, even though it's the same terminal point, I hope you have been realizing that as, as I was going along. But when it gets to this point in a negative rotation, in a clockwise rotation, then we are looking at here negative 90 degrees and so on and so on. All right, so now everybody is ready to understand uh, what measuring angles in radians is all about. And so now back into my unit circle on the computer screen. Once again, let's start out for simplicity. Let's start out with the positive counterclockwise uh, rotation. So the zero angle is here. And don't worry too much about, uh, about uh, what is a radian yet. And you will get, get that figured out. But so I'm, I'm going to, when your terminal side stays right, with, right, right on your initial side, once again, we call that it's a zero angle. Zero degree, zero radian, whatever you want to name it, but it's permanently the zero degree, I mean the zero angle, because there was no, no opening up. But now think about, I'm going to start moving my terminal point along the unit circle. So now I need you to start con connect with the concept of a circumference here. So my, on my unit circle, I am moving my terminal point to make a complete rotation. So from zero degrees uh, and complete my cycle to hit to the 360 degrees. So a complete rotation of a circle made one complete circumference of our unit circle. Am I correct? So in that way, and if we recall from high school geometry, circumference equals to pi r, where 2 pi is just part of the formula to calculate circumference. And by the way, a quick reminder, circumference means how much length of the, of, as we travel along the unit circle, not the area. Here I'm looking at the circumference, how much we're moving around the unit circle. So the circumference on any unit circle, on, on any circle, is 2 pi r. But hey, wait a minute. This circle of ours that we are working with right here is special. It, we already knew since the beginning of our discussion here that the radius is 1. And so substituting that value into my circumference uh, formula, then on this special unit circle, once you finish making a complete 360 degrees rotation, then you have made a circumference, an, a rotation that equivalent to the circumference being 2 pi. Welcome to the world of radians. So now, ladies and gentlemen, when your terminal side along stays right on that uh, initial side, and we're starting at the angle zero, and then as I described through the demonstration, then we travel counterclockwise along the unit circle, and we made a complete cycle to hit 360 degrees. We now no longer call that rotation a 360 degrees, but now we we said that we made a rotation of a complete 
2 pi. All right, so that same angle there being 360. Now it's, it's equivalent to the, the rotation of being 2 pi. And that's the beginning of our understanding in terms of uh, measuring angles in, in radians. And so now let's uh, understand a little further once we start understanding and making that connection. So here's the idea. Once again, back to the, or I can turn over to my uh, computer screen up here. So you're at the zero angle. And if you make a complete cycle, this is also 2 pi. But now think about what if we did not make a complete cycle? We only, we, we start from zero angle and we only go halfway. That means we land at, land right into that point of the 180 degree angle or we are right at halfway on the circumference of the circle. Then how much angle would that be? 180 degrees, I agree, but thinking in terms of circumference, we only made halfway on a circle. So now the new understanding here, we're going to call that at this angle, we're looking at a, we think about mathematically 2 pi is a complete cycle. We're only going halfway. So that gives me a pi. So right here is my angle pi right there. So instead of calling 180, that's in degrees uh, convention. Here in the radians, uh, we call that this angle here in a positive direction is a pi, halfway on the unit circle. And then, so now we can start thinking further. Now, what if from the starting point here on the zero, from the zero angle, we only rotating to hit that spot where it was traditionally 90 degrees. But now 90 degrees relatively to the entire complete circle, then it's only a one-fourth, a one-quarter of the circle. The picture right here is pretty obvious. It's, we only made it. If we only stop right here at 90 degrees, we are only one-quarter of the complete cycle. So a complete cycle now, you already knew it. 2 pi is to represent a complete cycle in radians or as a, uh, an angle rotation. But now a quarter of that, so 2 pi over 4. So that's now give me 2 pi over 4, reducing the fraction, give me a pi over 2. So now, ladies and gentlemen, throughout our trigonometry quarter, waiting ahead, a lot of time you hear the term pi over 2, that is equivalent to a positive 90 degrees angle going in a positive direction. So there you go. Zero angle is here. Pi over 2 is here, indicating a 90 degrees rotation. A pi is here, is indicating when your angle hits a 180 rotation, 180 degrees rotation. And so now what about uh, this point down here? Okay, so so when you made to that far down at the deep, at right at the bottom of the unit circle, then the unit circle here has four separate quarters. Am I correct? Four separate quarters right here. This first quarter represents a pi over two rotation, and this next one here is another pi over two, which is two pi over two. And so think about as portions of a pi right here, then portion of a, of a nice unit circle, then when we get to that bottom point, then we have made four, three quarters, but each quarter is a pi over two. So pi over two, but we made three quarters. So that's why this angle over right here, traditionally we call that as the 270 degrees rotation, but now in terms of the, in terms of the radians, we call it the three pi over two angles. And so, once again, from here we're moving further to complete the last quarter on the unit circle. We're making 4 pi over 4, which is reduced down to a 2 pi. All right, so now for the rest of our discussion, we're going to just keep recognizing further and further, more and more of those, uh, what we so-called common angles. So back to a unit circle and allow me that I have to start out again from a, a nice and cleaner unit circle here. But the zero angle is here indicating no rotation. 
And once again, we, I'm still assuming that we're moving in, in a positive direction. So now, think about when you hit that first point here, on the, on, when we hit that destination point I already indicated here, then this angle opening up in degrees, in traditional degrees measurements, it's about a 45 degrees uh, rotation. But then, and we already knew from, from earlier that right here it's a pi over 2 or a 90 degrees. Uh, 90 degrees is here, and pi over 2 is right there. Okay? And so think about on the entire unit circle, how many portions of this 45 degrees will there be? How many, or in other words, how many slices like this? Think, think about your entire complete unit circle is like a pizza over here, then here we have a pizza, pizza slice, right? So doesn't it make sense that we're going to have eight slices like that all over throughout the entire circle? And so only a 45 degrees of rotation like this is equivalent to a, a one-eighth of your complete cycle. So your complete rotation, your complete cycle is a 2 pi. But now we're looking only for, we're only looking at one-eighth of that, an eighth of that. So 2 pi, let's do the math right here, 2 pi over 8. And reducing the common factor in the denominator and the numerator together, we're coming down to a pi over 4. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, pi over 4 is the radian equivalent to 45 degrees right here. So in radians, we call this angle, this 45 degrees of rotation, it's a pi over 4 rotation. All right, and so now, tackling down right at that point where I was uh, trying to point out for everybody that let's think about this pi over 4 here as one separate but equal portion because the rest of the circle, the rest of the unit circle is being filled out with uh, these added up portions of the 45 degrees. And so that's why here, once again, to clarify, the reason we have a pi over 2 here is another thought of that is a pi over 2 is the same as two pieces of the pi over 4. And that's why it's reducing, it's reducing, reducing the fraction and it turns into a pi over 2 here. All right. And so now we're going to continue our journey, still moving in a positive direction. So here's a pi over 4. We're moving further, one more pi over 4, and that makes it 2 pi over 4, which is a pi over 2. So when I'm going to continue moving further and make another portion like that, and when I get to here, there are 1, 2, and 3. So right here, this angle, we used to call that in degrees. We call that it's 135 degrees. But now in radians, pi over 4 is each of our base units right here, but we got three of those units, three of those portions. So it now makes perfect sense to call it it's a 3 pi over 4 angle in radians. All right, and so in that way, one portion, one unit, two units, three units, four units, and I meant the units of each pi over 4. Then when we hit to here, it was our 180 degrees of rotation. But now in radians, we call it it's a it's a 4 pi over 4, or it's just that famous pi that we already learned. All right, so now everybody can start having an idea of where I'm going. So hopefully you can start constructing your own unit circle. But this point right down here, another, another pi over, f another unit of pi over 4 added to pi over here. So that would make it, because 4 pi over 4 is here, so another additional one. So here it's going to give me a 5 pi over 4. And then after 5 pi over 4, we're continuing our rotation and make another additional pi over 4 rotation. So we are landing into the 6 pi over 4, which mathematically reduces to, we're back down to the 3 pi over 2, as we already knew. And then from where we're at, from where we're at right here, three pi over two, as we can, and we will continue rotating further. We are going to make another additional rotation of another pi over four. Then from here moving to here, six pi over four, six pi over four, but add with an, another one, another additional. So we have seven pi over four. 
and then now adding to adding that to that last unit of the pi over 4 we ending at an 8 pi over 4 and that's making it our 2 2 pi as we already knew so once again to clarify the idea so the entire unit circle has 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 equal portion of the 45 degrees of slices of pizza and so in that way if we are calling the rotations equivalent to each of those 45 degrees rotation is a pi over 4 as base right here then that's how we coming up with these other ratios okay all right and once again starting out with a blank unit circle so that everybody can have a nice and clean view but our t initial side is right here and think about you're gonna start for simplicity you're gonna have your terminal points move along the unit circle in the positive rotation so, so now when your terminal point hits to here and creating and create that what we so call 30 degrees angle then 30 degrees angle think about the entire now to think ahead a little bit but 90 degrees angle is here and we already learned that was equivalent to a pi over 2 so look immediately look right into the picture we have and we don't, don't need to go too far we don't need to go throughout the entire circle but inside of this quarter of the circle how many portion of this small slice right here how many times we have how many sectors how many slices of that 30 degrees of rotation then we actually have three portions like that and so 30 degrees now can be understood as it was a pi over three pi over two but then a third of that so a third of a pi over two this is what it is so a third of a pi over two is mathematically a pi over six all right and so in that reason so from now on this point right here besides calling that it's a 30 degrees angle we have now in radians it's a pi over six angle all right and so in that way from here being a pi over six now a pi over six add with another additional pi over six this point right here we used to call that the 60 degrees angle but now mathematically a pi over six but add with another one so making it two pi over six and everybody can clarify with me right here and 2 pi over 6 is simply a pi over 3 after we reducing the common factors and so 60 degrees is now in radians a pi over 3 rotation all right and so this next angle right here another additional 30 degrees rotation further than the 90 degrees and so it's a you can think of that as a pi over 2 but we're adding a an additional pi over 6 to it 30 degrees and so in degrees it's 120 but we think of that as a, an, a another additional 30 degrees added on top of the 90 degrees right here and so that angle here in radians adding the two fraction right here a pi over 2 which is the same as a, a 2 pi over 6 plus a pi over six, another pi over 6 right here then we're looking at or you can count the portion here 1 2 3 and 4 so we're looking at 4 pi over 6 or reducing the common factors this angle right here is the same as a allow me to erase uh, quickly erase this but that is now the same as a 2 pi over 3 and then now at this point uh, you can be a lot more flexible than this and right here that angle in degrees being 150 degrees so now we're looking at a 5 pi over 6 once again it makes sense that 1 2 3 4 5 by the time that the terminal points get to that point right here there has been 
five equal portion of the pi over six, and that's why it's a five pi over six. And so here, 180 degrees, it's a pi, but it originally came out, or it, you can think of that as we got six pi over six is here. And then, down to these points right here. So now, here is a seven pi over six. One more pi over six after seven pi over six, give, giving me eight pi over six. But eight pi over six reduces down. And, and for any of us here being a starter, being a beginner, it never hurts to use a, think of these as a, as a fraction that involves pi right here. So any of this here is. So 8 pi over 6 reduces down to a 4 pi over 3. Or this is equivalent to the 240 degrees angle. And I should have also written this is the, the angle to 210. Okay. And then yes, here we go. The 3 pi over 2 is here, as, we are, as you already knew it. And to clarify again that the 3 pi over 2 is exactly the same in, in, in terms of thinking of these uh, separate units of those, each of those are pi over 6. Then the 3 pi over 2 is uh, how, many times of the three, how many times of the pi over 6 have we made it to this point right here? It was uh, 12 pi over, nope, it's not 12 pi, I miscounted. Nine pi over six. All right, and then this next angle right here. Okay, so this next angle we call that it's the three hundred degrees, but really it was ten pi over six, which is a five pi over 3. It came out from 10 pi over 6, 10 pieces of the pi over 6. And then that's the same as a, after reducing the common fac factors, it's 5 pi over 3. And then this other one here that lands at 330 degrees in degrees, and now it is 11 pi over 6. And then last one here is a 2 pi. Or you can think of that right here as the, being the same as a 12 pi over 6. So your complete unit circle has uh, 12 equal portions of the pi over 6. Right there. And so going comp around the circle in a positive direction, we ended up with a 2 pi being a 12 pi over 6, same as the 12 pi over 6. All right, so at this point, let me show you a, a, a convenient formula. Actually, there are two of them that uh, can be used in a lot of uh, places here that conveniently convert between the radian angles and the, the angles in, in radian measurements or the angle in uh, degrees measurements. But uh, if you now have been looking at your unit circle closely, the idea now is that if you're having any angle in radian degrees, you know, allow me to use capital R to represent uh, radian degrees right here then your curtain angle from wherever your curtain angle, the angle is the angle. How big that is, is how big that is. Radians or degrees is just the, the different style of, of how we measure it. And so capital R represents how big your angle is in, in the measurement of your angle in radians. So if you put your radians, your angle in radians as a ratio with the complete circle, 2 pi, and we have learned through our discussion that 2 pi is one complete cycle. So any angle is simply a portion out of, of, a, out of a complete cycle, 2 pi. And so no matter if you are in degrees or in radian, that proportion must always be true. So what it means here, what it implies here is that if you're looking at your angles in degrees right here, and allow me to use capital, capital letter D to represent the measurement of your angle in degrees, so that same portion has to be the same, has to be true as well when you put degrees over complete rotations, being 300 and 
60 degrees. And so what, so what I'm saying here truly is, if you're looking at comparing these two ratios side by side, they have to rule of thumb. They have to always equal. And therefore, now algebraically, this is what we can do. Think of this as a relationship, as an equation with two variables. Then we can rearrange that same equation. I am going to multiply both sides of, of this relationship by a 2 pi constant. Then I'm going to end up with R equals D multiplied with 2 pi on my right hand side and divided by 360. And that allows me to, in my next step, the left hand side, uh, there isn't much to do, but the right hand side, we can further simplify or reduce that, the, two, the common factor to in from both numerator and denominator. So we use that too, and here we consequently come down to only 180. And so we arrive at d times pi over 180. And so that gives us, that actually opens up for us a convenient formula that radians equals to given angle measurement in degrees multiplied with the ratio pi over 180. And this formula is particularly good when you need to convert, a lot of time convert from a, a, an angle given in degrees measurement into a, a radian measurement. And then, in the same argument, in a similar argument here, starting for out from that uh, beginning, the reasoning I made earlier, then from this relationship, the two ratio have to always equal, then we can multiply both sides of that relationship by 360. So consequently, I'm going to rearrange that equation into r over 2 pi, but multiply with 360s. So what I did, I multiplied 360 to both sides, and 360 cancel with my 360 here, giving me just a single, a simple d value, the degrees measurement on the right-hand side. And so on my right hand side, at this point, there isn't much left to be done. But the, right, the left hand side here, we can actually, similar to the earlier work, here, I can cancel out that common factor too, and I, it reduces down to 180 here. So concluding my re rearrangement, I'm looking at a r times 180 on the left hand side over pi. And all that there is to equals d. And so we now recognize another formula. d is equal to the, the measurement of your angle in degrees equals to your radians measurement that was given multiplied with the ratio 180 divided by pi. And so this formula can be particularly useful any time that you are asked to convert from an angle that was given in radians and converting it back to a degrees of measurement.